Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Once again, single cask from Ireland. So this is called Teufels Whiskey. The word Teufel means devils. So the devil's whiskey. There's a story behind this. Now, if you look very, very closely at this label, terrible label for photographs. So at the, exactly. So you see an ice hockey player. Now, this is actually dedicated and in cooperation with a local, we have the first premium league and we have the second league. So, um, so we have major league baseball, we have minor league baseball. So this would be not the majors for um, hockey, it would be the minor leagues. And this is the, um, the minor leagues here in Germany and the place that they actually play is called Bad, B-A-D, Nauheim. Now, the word B-A-D in German does not mean um, something that is terrible, but it actually means a spa. Yeah, so um, you will actually see um, areas in Germany, Bad Segeberg, Bad Bramstedt, so Bad Nau Nauheim. And so this is actually a, a designation given by the government to certain cities and regions in Germany with particularly... Um, um, like a like a spa area, where you actually have great air quality and a lot of places where you have um, clinics and hospitals for rehabilitation. All right, especially after you have a surgery or cancer or whatever. So that's actually Bad Nauheim is a beautiful, beautiful place down there in the middle of um, Germany, closer to Frankfurt than anything else. And um, the name of the ice hockey team are the Red Devils. Ta-da! <laughs> so that's the reason why. Whiskey base number 193339. We have a five-year-old single malt from Ireland, so let's assume that it's going to be Great Northern here. 57.5%, um, and I'll get to that in a second. This is a five-year-old full maturation in an ex um, red wine cask from France. So, yeah, what can I say here? Mareike Spitze, www.irish-whiskies.eys.de uh, uh, has actually started a cooperation with the Red Devils here. And what else would be better than to celebrate the 75th anniversary of this local club than her release number one. And this release number one is a triple distilled single malt Irish whiskey stored or aged for the entire five years in a red wine barrel from France and it's bottled at cast strength. No coloring added, very, very, very nice. So now this was released 2021. I forgot about this whiskey, <laughs> let's put it that way. Now I do bottle shares, I did not drink all of this, don't worry about that, I drank that much basically. And I was like, I saw Marika in her jersey from the ice hockey team just the other day on Instagram or social media. And I was like, oh yeah, the whiskey. <laughs> Let's do the video about that. So we have a total here of 296 bottles. What I really like is I have bottle number 179 of 256, as I said, 296. And we actually have here a 700 milliliter bottle and release number one. There has not yet been a release number two. Maybe that will come soon. What am I gonna compare it to? I almost always compare a whiskey to something. I picked a different Irish whiskey, this time 50%. This is a single grain that Clana Kilty bottled, but yet actually finished at their own property at the warehouse overlooking the Atlantic coast. And this is a Bordeaux cask finish from them. Now, uh, this was from 2019. So this has been hanging around in my uh, cabinet here for a little bit longer. And what this was, was um, Marike Spitze, she actually at the Village, which is one of the biggest whiskey fairs in Germany, in Nuremberg, uh, she brought a cask with her with this. And so you were able to actually hand fill your own bottle. So I was not there, it was too far away back then when I lived up in the north there, that was almost like an eight and a half hour, eight and a half hour drive, too far to go to the whiskey fair to do my videos back then and so on. Now I'm an exhibitor myself. I exhibit um, 
products from N10 Bourbon and other American whiskeys at whiskey fairs. I will be there in 2023 for the first time. And this was actually distilled in 2010, so it's probably Cootie Juice. And it was bottled here on the 12th of March, 2019. This was a hand fill. Marika did it for me, brought the bottle to one of our meetups together, and um, I was able to purchase that. This was 59 euros. It's now on sale at the moment for 55 euros. I think I paid 60 euros for this as well. So we're almost in the same price category. Nine-year-old grain whiskey, five-year-old single malt, triple distilled. The entire full maturation in French red wine cask. Here we have a finish, I don't know how long, in a Bordeaux French wine cask, 50% ABV. Now, on the nose, this is so good. <laughs> I get hazelnuts, I get cassius, I get strawberries, I get raspberries, and there's a tiny little bit maybe of marzipan and or chocolate in there. I love this nose. This is like a dessert in a bottle. All right, this is so excellent on the nose. Alcohol, no problem, 57.5%. Now, if I were to rank them, I would have strawberry, raspberry, cassius. Then I'd have maybe then the chocolate marzipan and the hazelnut at the end. So I don't get that much of the nut there, but I do get that strawberry, raspberry goodness. It's almost like a, um, a New York style cheesecake. This is, I like. This on the other hand, is much more subtle, the 50%. I have a little bit more alcohol bite there than I do with the 57.5. And here I get a little bit of a red currant going on. Here I have the raspberry, here I have the red currant. Both of these are red fruits, both of these are the Bordeaux um, red wine cask as well as the French red wine cask are well done. This is five years, full maturation, really recognize it. This is just a finish. Now, I would love to know more information. I would love to know is that European oak or American oak? I would like to know the region in France that this red wine came from. Bordeaux is a region. It's not the type of grape varietals I use, it's a region. So I would like to know the region. I would like to know the type of grapes. Is it Cabernet Sauvignon? Is it something else in there? Um, what type of grapes are you used? I would even like to know the Vincert's name himself that actually sold this cask then uh, to Ireland and so on. But the question really is, what do I need to know? What am I allowed to know? And what don't I really need to know? Now, to be honest, I think the transparency here is good. We have red wine from France. We have five years of age. We have ABV, we have cast strength, we have non-chilled filtered, we have no artificial coloring. Everything is actually what we need. Could I always want to know more? Yes, I would love to geek out, but sometimes um, there's just enough information given. All right, let's try the two of these, 57.5%. Mm -hmm. That's some strong whiskey. Now, I am not a wimp with a fat cast strength whiskey, barrel proof whiskey. But, and this is the real question, a year after this was, was, was released, now the team of the ice hockey club in Bad Nauenheim, they have 30 some players, they have another 20 people on staff, their families and so on. Just alone with the players and their family, you could have sold 300 bottles. And yet these bottles are still there. Why? I, Whiskey Jason, personal opinion, think that Marika Spitzer with her www.irish-whiskies.de um, actually had a little bit of a wrong target audience in mind when she bottled this. The normal person that's a fan of an ice hockey club does not drink cast strength whiskey at 57.5%. They're going to be overwhelmed probably with the 46% that I want. I think she should have diluted this down to 46%, kept it non-chilled filtered, no color added for us freaks, but made it much, much more accessible to the normal person that drinks a whiskey. We have 80 million plus people over here in Germany. Of these 80 million, they're not 
ten thousand, a hundred thousand. Let's go for a hundred thousand. Let's go for a quarter million people. Let's say there's two hundred fifty thousand people in Germany that actually, I'm going to say on a monthly basis, drink cast drink whiskey over here. It's not the normal thing to do. The normal thing to do is to drink beer and wine. The normal thing is to drink a cocktail. The normal thing is maybe a whiskey on the rocks, a Jameson or something like that. 40%. Oh no, that's too much. There are not that many people over here in Germany that actually just enjoy cast strength. And especially not this cast strength. I am a little overwhelmed with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute it down to about 48%. So to take it from 57.5 to 48, we need a little bit of water. A lot of you would have said a teaspoon and a half, maybe, maybe a whole teaspoon. And I'm just going to go over here very briefly to the 50%. The single grain, try this. Mm -hmm. Much more accessible, sweeter. I get that red currant going on in there. It's got a little bit of a Kool-Aid moment almost. A little bit like that fake cherry moment there. Is it a good whiskey? It's a, it's a, it's a good it's okay. It's good between good and okay. It's an average. It's a C. There's nothing wrong with this whiskey, but there's nothing that I shout hallelujah, great stuff. If I remember paying 50, 60 euros three and a half years ago, basically, that's a little bit too much money for this, but it was a hand fill. Yes, you had the experience. I actually was at a whiskey festival, whiskey fair, and right, adjacent, right across from my booth was another booth here from a German distributor, um, German distillery that I work with, actually. And they had their cask, it was a rum cask, and people actually go and were able to fill up their own bottles. They loved it. It was like, oh, that experience is just filling up your own bottle, labeling your own bottles worth another 10 to 15 euros just for that experience. And I think that's actually creating memories is the thing we should do, all right? And so that's what this was all about. Now, I gave a little bit of time to mingle here. Let's cleanse my palate very briefly. Mm. 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 Now, that is a whiskey that I think the people of Bad Nauheim would have actually enjoyed. You do have a lot of that strawberry. You do have a really a, a good amount of the cassis in there. And you have that raspberry on top with vanilla, marzipan, chocolate, a little bit of hazelnut. It's got a great thick mouthfeel, viscosity. It's a little bit of an oiliness. This is a really, really good whiskey, diluted down to a drinking moment. The cast strength, the barrel proof moment, is even for me, and I do like cast strength often, it was just too much. It was just too much to handle, and I think that's what actually um, is sometimes our problem when we're thinking about new bottlings and our target audience. Who are we going to sell to? Are we going to sell to those geeks and we only have 300 bottles and we're going to have 300 geeks to go buy it? Yes. But this is Irish whiskey. Has a hard time in Germany. This is a fan um, whiskey, Teufels whiskey, Devil's whiskey. And this is not the best. This is an independent labeling, a one-off. And um, I think we should need to make things more accessible to the people that are going to buy it and not the people we hope that are going to buy it. So first question, what would you rather have? Would you rather have a high proof, cast strength, barrel proof whiskey that doesn't taste that great? Or would you rather have a whiskey at a drinking um, alcohol level of maybe 43, 46% non chilled filtered, no color added, we can do 43, we can do 46, it's better. Uh, what would you rather have? Now, I know a few people out there are going to go, but Jason, I can put my own water in there. I don't need them adding water. You, my friend, are an exclusive club of a very few people that do and know that. Most of the people out there in the world don't. I remember the very, very, very first bottle that I bought of whiskey online. It was from um, a local department store here in Germany um, that is still going bankrupt. been going bankrupt for like the last three to five years called Kastadt. And it was a Glenn Fackler's and cast strength. It was 105. And I struggled with that little bottle. 
Why? Because I thought real men don't put water in whiskey. And so I tr struggled and it was too hot and it was so difficult to drink. And then I finally learned, hey, thank you, Ralfi. A half a teaspoon, a teaspoon of um, water just makes life so much better sometimes. And therefore, I am pa personally of the, of the opinion that if the whiskey tastes better at a lower proof, bottle it at a lower proof. Especially if it's a single cask for a special, for example, in this case, a sports club. Or for a different um, thing there. But hey, my personal opinion. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking. I'm giving this a C plus uh, for taste at a value as a solid C. Um, I'm still amazed and surprised that um, these almost 300 bottles, some of them still out there. I really like that and I can encourage people, if you're in Germany and you have access to online shopping opportunities, go online www.irish-whiskies.de ys.de and find the bottle it's on sale at the moment buy it and enjoy it thank you very much for watching thank you very much for subscribing thank you very much for sharing and telling others whiskey jason here bye bye